What it do, everybody? Hey, midweek chat. Hey, I know it's mid. I know it's UT Martin, but look, man, we got a lot of things to talk about, man. Hendon Hooker, Josh Heupel, midweek press conferences for the team. Turner, dude, what's going on, bro? Man, there's a lot to talk about, bro. Hey, all I'm saying is front runner, Hooker Heisman. You know how I move. Real G's move in <laughs> silence like lasagna. It's straight up Tennessee, baby. Let's go. Welcome, welcome, welcome everybody to the midweek chat. You know, it's your boy Ruck here, Turner here with me. Man, um, it's been a great week because I still can't believe we beat Alabama. <laughs> man, I can't either. I had man, I don't know why. I hadn't showed this. I gotta show it. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What that boy got? What the fuck getting? <laughs> oh yeah. From the sideline. Y'all had the to boy, give me the, a keep safe, you feel me? The this man Turner <laughs> hit the rush the field. Listen, y'all. I sit in the I sit in the third row of the upper deck, and Turner sits in like the 30th row down in the, we both sit in the north end zone. <laughs> but of course he got closer to the field than me. I was a little too late. By the time I got down there, there was already about 60,000 on the grass. And I was like, <laughs> I ain't even going to get to get what I want. But the boy took the board. The boy took it. Hey, had to have something, bro. Hey. I, I was on facts. there quick. Hey, hey man. <laughs> that celebration was crazy. Like, just it from, was, man. Still, from top still. to bottom, it was crazy. Still just talking about it, bro. I mean, it still don't sound – I mean, I'm still on the high from it. I mean, just the – I don't even know. I can't even explain it. Just simply because of – it's been so long, man. It's been yeah. so long, and uh, it was it was needed, bro. And But today's show, man, we're going to talk a lot about just – normally we would spend a lot of time talking about more about the playmakers. What are we looking for from Tennessee, y'all? Let's rest up this week. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. we don't have much to say. But while we're right here, man, like, comment, subscribe, join the channel. Go ahead and hit the uh, the bell notification so you never miss a video. Follow us, man. Everything. Twitter, Facebook. You can see it scrolling along the bottom of the screen. Man, just go look us up. Follow, man. We got great content coming. Um, and we are really on our way to we're on our way to 100 subscribers and we're on Crazy. our way to 100 followers on Instagram. Um, on Facebook, we've surpassed the 100 uh, follower mark. But now on Insta, we are getting close. I think we're like four or five people away, man. If you're watching the video, follow us straight up Tennessee. Come Hit on. that follow button because that's where we do all our content, man. You'll see everything. Um, know when the new episode's coming up, who's our new guest coming next week. Fire episode coming next <laughs> week with my man Lance Asher, who is a huge Kentucky football fan and a huge Kentucky basketball fan. He's not the guys that say, oh, I'm a Kentucky basketball fan, but I'm an Alabama football fan. Get out of here. Like people, <laughs> people, people that be doing people that be doing that, I'd be like, you got to go somewhere because obviously you, you, you didn't wagon. You didn't grow up like that's all I'm gonna say. Anti ways, um, man. Midweek press conferences, man. There's a lot that kind of happened this week. I think the media met with Tim Banks, Alex Golish, Javante mm -hmm. Spragans, Tamarian McDonald, Danico Slaughter, um, mm -hmm. uh, and Princeton Fant. And uh, I mean, just a ton of good things. Um, this week from as far as Vol football and Vol players are concerned. It was really cool for me to hear from Danico Slaughter. I didn't realize that Slaughter was a junior. 
And um, I also didn't realize how much experience he had. I mean, his first year was the Jeremy Pruitt 2020 COVID year when we played a few games. And I think we played the 10-game the SEC schedule. Yeah. He started the first game against South Carolina and played great. And then I remember you and I talking even then and saying, where's Slaughter go? Like, what mm -hmm. happened to him? And so – Again, it's like every time Danico Slaughter gets an opportunity, he makes the most of it every single time. And yeah. so I would like to see more Slaughter. Um, but obviously we know with Jalen McCullough and the entire case, um, those charges are probably going to get dropped here within the next week or so. And he will 100% back, be back. He will 100% be back for Kentucky. But um yeah, a lot of lot of good interviews this week. Yeah, man, I like the Alex Golish. Um, just hearing him talk about Jalen Hyde, honestly, just uh, you know how much work Hyde has put in in the off season, and just just how much he's grown um, from last year to this year. Like it's crazy to, I don't know, man. It just hard work pays off, you know. It does. And it's just. Uh, just the whole, I mean, and just the whole mentality and the whole outlook on not just the coaching staff, but the players as well. Just like, man, it's, it's, I don't even know how to explain it. It's nice to play as a team for once. Ain't nobody out there getting theirs. Ain't nobody out there just trying to get theirs. Right. But there are, there are people getting theirs, but they ain't like just focused on it, you know? Uh, yeah, absolutely. They're focusing on the team and playing as a team. And you know, you heard Coach Coach Golish talk in the uh, press conference. He was like, because he was asked about defense, and he was like, "Man, we just do what Coach Hype wants." He, he did. Coach Hype, he said, "He said this is what Coach Hype wants. Coach Hype wants this fast offense, and he wants that aggressive defense. So we just follow what Coach Hype wants to do." Yeah. You know? He was like, he wants. Uh, he said he wants it to be aggressive play calling on yeah. both sides of the football, and uh, that's exactly what we get every single week and we that's the one thing that i love about this coaching staff we have they have never wavered like that there's never been just like well I, I don't know what we're gonna do this game you know what i'm saying yeah. what oh, like yeah. it's been that uncertainty over the last few years and with these guys it's like we know what we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna literally try to run the ball punch you in the mouth and then we're going to hit you over top for 60 70 80 yard bombs because you can't guard us Oh, absolutely. And then absolutely. defensively, we know we're going to have some twists. We're going to have some disguised coverages. We're going to have a lot of linebackers playing man and being spies. And then we're going to have explosive defensive ends. Like, we know that. I mean, bro, this is not even on the, on the like, script or whatever we're going to call it today. This is just way out of left field. But Joshua Josephs is going to be a problem. Uh. I looked at the PFF. Uh, he got like thirty something snaps, right? I mean, he played a lot. Yeah, he was in Joshua the thirties and snaps, man. He's gonna be a problem. I can't wait to see him along with James Pierce, man. I'm hoping we get this uh, 2023 five star recruit in Davion Hobbs, defensive lineman. Um, he's a five star on, on on three's site, and so we we land a guy like that, man. It, it's gonna be Rodney Garner is getting to that that place where he's they're getting their guys in there, the guys they know that they need. So, well, and that's something uh, too about Tennessee football that we hadn't had in a while, you know. And I think I think the Batman game was huge for recruiting. I mean, Florida and Bama. I mean, in the past we hadn't been able to get four or five star guys. I mean, you did have five star guys, but I don't know, maybe. I think it might. It, I think it was a coaching thing. Our past coaching staffs really didn't do good at developing. Yeah. But I mean, let's let's be honest. Garantano wasn't he a five star or was he a four star? He's a four star dual threat, but he was number two ranked dual threat quarterback in that class. Yeah, and we see how that one worked out. Mm, did you see? Okay, this is kind of moving in, but did you see him? I seen it. I seen post it. Yeah. on social it. and said. Yeah. I don't even remember what he said, but 
something about the balls. I can't remember what he said either. Something about play calling genius or something. Yeah. And uh, I'm yeah. like, yeah, you're right, big dog. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, man, there's been a lot of things out there. I mean, did you see this? Okay. Had no idea about this. Jermaine Burton punched a female after the yeah. game that was a yeah, Tennessee I, fan. I seen the I seen the video on Twitter. I saw the video and I was like, oh, he's done. Like, yeah, I mean, there's a video of it, man. I mean, <laughs> you can't do that crap. No, bro. You frustrated, but you can't do that. And so I, I was like, that is extremely interesting to me. How in the world did you think you was going to get away with that? And can we, <laughs> I don't know. I just, this just popped up in my head talking about the midweek press conferences. I, I, I like how, uh, Sprags gave himself a nickname. Oh, bro, I love Javante <laughs> Spragans, bro. Javante Spragans might be uh, the he's like the he's like the the Grant Williams of football. He's hilarious. He don't talk too much, but when he does, it is just glorious. This man oh, yeah. said he the, he said he the zookeeper. Because he's now collecting stuffed animals of opposing team's mascots. Um, oh. He's got, so far, he's got the gator. He's got an elephant. Mm-hmm. Uh, did he get the LSU? He's got the tiger from LSU. Yeah, yep, absolutely. Uh, he said that the fans actually, so even like, dude, I, I wish I could have had enough time to find a skyhawk or something. But he's like, the fans will text him or slide on his DMs on Twitter and be like, oh, yeah. Hey, I'm in section blah, blah, row, blah, blah. Come get the come get this thing. And so that's crazy, bro. Yeah, dude, the Alabama fans or not the Alabama fans. I'm I'm sitting here. Our our fans are the ones that are giving him all these stuffed animals. They're the ones reaching out to him about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And so now that boy call himself the zookeeper. <laughs> Dude has me dead. He says he gives them all to his mom. She just keeps the collection for him. Dude, on the social media thing, dude, I see. I don't know about you, but I see a lot of NFL players in orange. Oh, losing all losing all these bets. Nah, they they a bunch of VFLs. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> the latest VFL looked real good. He looked real good. Mm-hmm. It it was it was it was uh. It was real nice. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, a lot of guys. I mean, we've had Tyran Matthew now, Kyle Pitts. Mm-hmm. I mean, it doesn't stop. It, we, it don't, we make man. You, we make you put it on because well-deserved. Well-deserved. Man. Don't be saying, hey, people know now. Don't, don't bet against them boys. Don't bet against the boys, man. Don't bet against them boys, man. Um, you know, one thing that I've I've really been enjoying this year, man, is the is the uh, and the way I uh, the way I explain it is just the excited, nervous feeling I get every single oh, day. Yeah. Like I know it's mm-hmm. UT Martin, bro, but as a fan and as somebody who invests into this university with real dollars, like. Mm-hmm. Man, it just makes you excited and nervous every single time. And I know it's UT Martin. And uh, this week, you know, the goal is to get in there, handle business, be healthy, and and get out of there healthy as well. Um, But, bro, at the same time, you just get so amped up as a fan to watch them boys play, man. Yeah, you do. And so I I am now at this point (laughs) where next week, Kentucky – I ain't even told you this, bro. Hey, low key, I might be staying the whole weekend. (laughs) (laughs) I ain't even playing, bro. Because, dude, one, I'm like, gosh, that would be a terrible drive to have to go back to drive. Um, It'd be, yeah, because you wouldn't get home to 1 a.m., 1 2 a.m. I wouldn't get home to 1, have to be up at 5 to go serve and, and load in at my church that I get the opportunity to lead worship at. But, um, I'm like, man, I don't even know if I'd be my best, my best version of myself having to do that. No, so for sure, for sure. Your boy might be up in Knoxville like, yeah, all week sleeping on the couch downstairs, boy. Hey, I'm all about it. Bring it on. 
I got uh, one. I got. I do have a question though. Dude, I got a couple questions for you too. So what's up? Oh no, you go ahead. You go nah, ahead. I'm gonna say. I, I'm I'm listening to you, Doc. We're gonna see it on you gonna see it on the bottom of the screen. Oh shoot. We can rant about this or we ain't gotta oh, rant. It oh, it can be shoot. it can just be a or we can talk about it. We done told y'all. <laughs> we done told y'all. He don't his name ain't Hendon no more. It's Heisman Hooker. Okay. So when you talk. When you speak of the man's name, put some respect on his name, okay? Like, let's be reminded that Hendon Hooker is playing out of this world. Not only is he playing out of this world, what he's doing and how Tennessee is performing largely sits on his shoulders. Yes, did he fumble the football last week in a missed exchange with Jabari Small? Yes, sure. did he throw an interception because there was a heck of a gap pressure couldn't get the ball over, sailed the guy, pick. Yes. But let's think about where Tennessee was, y'all. Like, where have we come from? And how has he progressed in such a short amount of time? The way that he's progressed, the way that he's reading the field, the way that he's throwing the football. Bro, like, let's talk about how he's throwing the ball. Jason Swain said it best. You know what I'm saying? I need to put that clip in here. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm gonna put that clip in here. And on Friday, on the one more day episode, I'm gonna, gonna play the clip. Here. I'm gonna play the clip. But I can't tell y'all what the clip says yet because it's that important that you wait to hear what the clip says. But dude, bit, bro, Hendon is, dude, Hendon is just he, he's playing out of this world, bro, out of this world. Yeah, man. The big the big thing for me is he like <sighs> accurate. Dude, the 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 pocket awareness and just how calm he is in the pocket, bro. Yo. It is it's night and day difference from last year. Night and you day. Know, they they said it on Volquest. The other, I I was a couple of days ago. They're like, you know, Hendon Hooker, he's not looking to run. Last year he was looking to run some. Yeah, he bailed himself out a lot. I felt like last year. Yeah, you, he felt pressure and he would run. And this yep. year, you see him stepping up in the pocket, sidestepping, and just keeping his eyes down the field the whole time. Yeah. I mean, dude, in the people, people compl I mean, you hear all the haters, hater, 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 hater. C.J. Stroud. I, I would love to see him. I would love to see Hendon Hooker's numbers if he was. At Ohio State. Oh my gosh. They would be bananas. But I also, not to change the subject. Give yeah, I'm with you. Give me Ohio State. That's all give I'm gonna say. Me. I'm gonna leave it at that. All you Ohio State fans talking crazy. The best team that you're gonna play this year is gonna be later in the year. You have played zero top 25 teams. Zero. Ask us how many we've played. How many have we played and how many have we beaten? That's less than how many touchdowns Jalen Hyatt had last week. <laughs> but it's still almost as many. Four. So we have beaten four ranked teams. Until y'all beat somebody, don't text me. Until y'all beat somebody, don't be talking about, oh, yeah, we played somebody, CJ Stroud, blah, blah, blah. Get out of here. I wish that when those rumors came out about Ohio State joining the SEC, that in 2025 with all that Texas and Oklahoma, come on. Come on. I want you to come on, please. Because I promise that 11-1 and 1 and 12-0 and 0 seasons y'all be having quickly goes to 8-4. and 4. I promise you. Absolutely. I can promise you. Now, they're going to start getting a little bit better recruits if they join the SEC. But still, your record goes – Two from the, your 12 and 0, 11 and 1, two quickly, nine and three, eight and four. And Tennessee will be one of your losses. Come at me, Absolutely. bro. <clears throat> Absolutely. Give me, give me Ohio State in the playoff. And let's yeah, talk about I, this I, really fast. Let's, I know like, you talking about Ohio State. Mm -hmm. This is the reason I think you, you don't want none of this, bro. Hendon Hooker is thrown for almost 2,000 yards. That man got 15 touchdowns and one pick. Can I just tell you that the man's 
QBR is 91.2. Like, like. That's what? unheard of, man. Huh? Like, huh? Stop, and stop the, the, stop the noise, people. Y'all and, sleep. And, you know, and the thing about Hinton Hooker, he, he is the front runner, in my opinion, of course, not just because he's at Tennessee, but look yeah. at his resume. He not only does he, of course, you're going to put up big numbers against Ball State, Akron, but look at this man against Florida. Look at this man against LSU. Look at this man against Bama. These are top twenty-five teams, bro, and he's putting up he's putting up mad numbers. Yep. I mean, let's be honest. Five touchdowns. Bananas. I mean, how do you how how, how do how do you not? Give him the Heisman. I mean, I understand we got a long seat, long, long rest of the season. He's got to keep doing it. But I'm talking about the first six games. He has proven to me if the Heisman got picked tomorrow, he's Heisman. Hinda Hooker's a Heisman. ESPN came out and said he is the number one front runner for the Heisman trophy. And um I don't disagree, man. I, I've seen enough to say well deserved my brother well deserved um and another another thing to also talk about josh hype was pushing for coach of the year bro oh hands down you see where uh what's his name apologized who you know you know i'm talking about hi oh, god he was in a he was a reporter oh yeah but, uh yeah chris doring yeah he should yeah. apologize and was like josh hopple needs to be in the coach of the year talk he literally I mean, said he's the how, coach. He's the best coach in the SEC this year. He said that, bro. How do you? It's your second year, second year as a head coach, and you are six and zero, oh, and you have beat four top twenty five teams. You different, bro. You different. That's what it is. He different, bro. He's different. Ah, <laughs> I, I mean. I love Josh, Josh Hopple. different. Danny White's the best thing. I mean, Danny White's amazing. Oh, yeah. I mean, our, our just. Yep. Everything. Everything. Everything, everything feels right. And it, it does. And not, not even, I mean, we're all about Tennessee, but not even just football. Like Tony V, Rick Barnes, Holly. Like, bro, come on. We're ranked in about every sport. We are. Right we now. are. That graphic came out, and it was like Lady Vol hoops, Vol hoops, baseball, basketball, football. Everybody ranked in the top twenty-five. Everybody, Dude. and it said everything school. <laughs> <laughs> we were just taking stabs at Kentucky. That's all. Yeah. Um, man, what you? I know it's UT Martin, and I, I guess we're done talking about Hendon because I could talk about Hendon for the next thirty. I mean, absolutely what are you most looking forward to not like a player i mean it could be a player but just what are you looking forward to this week with the ut martin game um what are some things that we need to look for or uh, what are some things that you just personally are excited about walking into neyland stadium at noon on saturday man just honestly just taking care of business i mean just coming in there, running the table. You know, I want to see some of these younger guys on the offensive side of the ball. I mean, yeah, I talked about Squirrel White in the previous one. I would like to see – I mean, I would like to see him run some routes and hit him on some routes, not just a deep ball or a little screen pass. Yeah. You know, just see him and how he does maybe – I mean, I know it's UT Martin, but still, if UT Martin – I don't know if UT Martin plays press or not, but if he's getting pressed on the outside, can he get around the press? You know, yeah, I, I think at the end of the day, I mean, the wide receiver room is crazy. I mean, you gotta think two of our three are coming back. Yep, Jalen Hyatt is coming back. You said Jalen's coming back and Brew. Yeah, they're gonna come back 100% in my, in my opinion. Yeah, so I don't know, man. We've got, we've got so many receivers, but anyway. I want to see Squirrel White. I would love to see him. 
I mean, honestly, on the defense side of the ball, I would love to see, like like we said, I know it's UT Martin, but I would love to see a shutout. Hey, I'm right there with you, bro. I think I'm most excited to see a lot of these young guys, honestly, on all sides, both sides of the football. I want to see Joe Milton again and make sure that what I'm seeing from Joe is what I'm going to see in 2023 because I'm telling you Joe Milton is QB1. No cap. Oh, well, 100%. And so I'm excited to see that progression of Joe Milton, but I'm also excited to just see, like you said, Squirrel White. I want to see these young guys get reps, run routes, run the football. Dylan Sampson, man, have a day Saturday. Have a day, bro. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all, we'll be back Friday, man, for the one more day. I, I am just – this team is different, and it's making me fall in love again with – Tennessee athletics, Tennessee sports. Not that I never ever did, because I've been riding from the dark times to the light. And right now, bro, it's a different season, bro. You got anything else, man, before we hop off and head back on Friday, bro? Just one more thing. Hey, this goes back to the social media things we've seen. If you're feeling crazy, I've heard rumors. Checkerboard and England dark mode. Oh, Orange, black. I'm hearing something, but that. Hey, said Cedric. I ah. said. Hey, y'all, we can't wait to hop back on here Friday, man, and just chop it up for the end of the week. Uh, again, a lot of things coming up in the next couple of weeks with Lance Asher coming next week. Uh, we'll end this week with the one more day on Friday. We'll see you guys tomorrow for my boy Turner. You already know it's Ruck and it's straight up Tennessee. Baby, we out.